I'm uh, Jason Paul. I'm Director of Product Marketing for, uh, for Shield. Uh, and so uh, we talked to you a little bit about back at CES about uh, what we at the time we were calling Project Shield, which is a project that we were uh, uh, been working on for a little bit over a year uh, to build a portable gaming device that was based off of Android. Uh, and so we're getting ready here in June to start shipping our first units, and we're going to be taking pre-orders uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, and show you uh, what is our, our latest design and, and some of the improvements that we've made since we first uh, uh, first showed it off at CES. Uh, so uh, our um, we sort of started the, the project. We really wanted to build a, a, a premium Android gaming device that would uh, help uh, sort of deliver a much better, uh, much richer, more immersive gaming experience uh, on Android uh, than we felt anything was out on the market and really allow uh, gamers to play both Android as well as PC games, uh, you know, anywhere. Uh, and so we, we came up with this concept for uh, building a dedicated Android gaming device with an integrated uh, controller. Um, and it's based off of uh, our Tegra 4 processor, which we also announced back at CES. I think the big thing about Tegra 4 is it's, it's a really big step up in performance. Uh, depending on the application, up to 6x performance increase over our prior generation. So what this means for game developers is a very uh, uh, a lot more performance and graphics capability to build richer, more immersive games. Uh, so uh, our hope is, and our goal is with Shield and with Tegra 4 is let's have uh, just a ton uh, more immersive, more rich content uh, available for gamers to enjoy and let's build a device with shield that's gonna allow them to enjoy it. The aspect uh, of the design is, you know, we built the form factor around the controller. And we wanted gamers to be able to pick up the device and immediately it be familiar to them. Uh, and this is familiar with people who played Xbox, played, played, played PlayStation, who've played any controller-based games before on PC or otherwise. The, uh, it's a full console-grade controller. And since January, we've spent a lot of time improving the controller design. Uh, we've got a lot of feedback from, uh, from gamers and press uh, about our initial design. Uh, we've spaced the joysticks out. We've provided more room for, uh, for movement around the joysticks. Uh, we've redesigned the D-pad to be a lot more precise. Uh, new trigger design. Uh, and just overall really cleaned up uh, a lot of the controls to deliver uh, what I think is the most precise tactile uh, controls uh, available in a, mobile, in a mobile platform. What were some of the changes since the last one? Uh, so we redesigned the triggers. Um, the old triggers were, had sort of a squishy feel to them. Mm -hmm. uh, these just have a very great pull on them. Uh, the D-pad, again, was kind of a bit squishy in the old design. Um, this one's very precise. You're not going to hit a wrong direction with it. Um, the, uh, the joysticks have better grip on the top of them, so your fingers stay on the joysticks. Uh, they're also a little bit more spread out, so you don't have to reach as far into the device to hit the joysticks. And just all the buttons have been sort of tightened up, better click, better actuation. Um, so overall, just really every aspect of the control over the last uh, several months since CES has been uh, redesigned and improved. Uh, the display, you know, every aspect of, uh, of the device, we just really wanted to have this um, incredible premium feel because this is you know from our vision is this is the best way to experience your Android games and so we put in a nice uh, 5 inch 720p display it's retinal quality so it's about uh, 294 uh, DPI uh, so when you're playing games you really can't see the pixels the images just look very crisp it's also got great viewing angle as well you sort of look at different angles of the screen uh, just uh, really uh, really nice display um, we also put some nice anti-glare coating on it, so it, when you're out in the sun, it still shows up uh, and uh, and has nice smooth uh, touch performance on it. So you know you can use you can navigate a lot of the UI using uh, using the controls, uh, or you can just come up and touch and uh, and access uh, access the UI through uh, normal multi-touch. Now I'll show you uh, one of the other cool things. Again, every Every aspect of the design here was uh, let's uh, let's build this for gaming and for delivering you know premium experience. And so what we did is we wanted you know great audio uh, along with the great graphics. And so we built a, what's called a base reflex design. That's coming from here. Yep. 
the base reflex design is uh, traditionally found in like higher end speaker systems, and at least as far as we know, this is the first time it's been integrated into a portable device. But what a base reflex system does is it routes the base frequencies through a separate tube around here, yeah. port that's right in this area, and that tube doesn't have any moving parts, so you minimize your distortion and have a much fuller sound. Uh, so one of the cool things that I found in use case for this device is that uh, you have, uh, you, know, you can just take it with you in from room to room, set it down and play your music, um, in addition to having great audio for your games. And it's got this sort of nice built-in stand here, so you can just set it down, um, and uh, nice forward-facing uh, speakers uh, to deliver a really premium, premium audio experience. So we can take a look at the back side then uh, of the device here and check out the I.O. panel. Uh, so uh, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and this jack has a mic on it so you can put up a combo uh, head headphone uh, with mic input. Uh, we also have a mic that's built into the uh, design right here as well. Uh, we've got a, a micro USB port for data and power. Uh, hook up any of your standard peripherals. Uh, mini, HDMI, mini HDMI for hooking up to a TV. So you can output to a TV and we can actually support output for up to uh, 4K by 2K video. Uh, so you can, for if you've got a, if you've got a 4K by 2K TV uh, sitting at home, <laughs> if you're that Just lucky. Just by chance, right? Just by chance. You know, hey, you can hook up Shield to it and play back videos <laughs> off of Shield uh, onto the device. Um, and then here we also have a micro SD slot for storage expansion. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've obviously got uh, internal storage, 16 gigabytes of internal, external storage, or internal storage, but you can also plug in an SD card and get additional storage. Uh, on top of the hard connections, we also have uh, Bluetooth, uh, 3.0 GPS, and uh, uh, H.2, or excuse me, 802.11n uh, uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, so it's got high-performance Wi-Fi for game streaming, which we'll talk to you about in a little bit. So from a UI perspective, uh, Shield is a, it's a, what we call a pure Android uh, implementation. We're not putting any uh, UI or, or other, you know, what some people may consider as clutter on top of um, the Android experience. Uh, we're giving people the familiar Android experience that they're used to on their phones and their tablets um, with access to, um, to their favorite apps. Uh, many of them are, are uh, you can navigate uh, with uh, using the controller, uh, or of course you can navigate them using the touch screen as well. So you've got Facebook, Netflix, Twitter, um, uh, Hulu Plus, Twitch TV if you want to watch live stream. Uh, but uh, but your, your, you know, your typical Android apps uh, on the device access that as well as all the Google apps, music, movies, uh, and Google Play. So cool thing here is with Android is you get this device, you, know, you have your phones, you have your tablets that you already own a ton of movies, a ton of content on. You get this device, you log into your Gmail account and all of that content is now available in Shield and all the apps that you already own. So you talked a bit about you know, movies, apps, but this is a device that's really built for gaming. Uh, and so we have, if you hit the NVIDIA button here, uh, we have uh, an app that we call TegraZone, which is uh, uh, our game center for the device. And it shows uh, your, uh, your Shield games that you have installed on the device. These are these are the Shield optimized games. This shows you your recent or favorite uh, favorites list of games, and then you can also uh, scroll down and see an icon view of all the Shield optimized games you have on your device. Uh, you can also go over to what we call the Shield Store, which is really just a front end on Google Play. Uh, in a way, it's a filter on Google Play to show you the best Shield optimized games. Um, you can search from some featured games go down further and view um, more of an icon view, a full list of all the games available. Uh, and then you find something that's interesting, you can come in, uh, look at descriptions, look at screenshots, and when you are ready to, uh, you know, interested in buying the game, you just pop over to Google Play, uh, and you can install the game right off of Google Play. So you don't have to have a separate account for this device, you just use your Google uh, account uh, and the credit card that's associated with that, and just shop uh, right from Google Play. But we give you a nice way of filtering and finding the best games uh, for the platform. So why don't we uh, why don't we check out a few of the games uh, that are on the device? So um, 
for people who pre-order uh, Shield um, and uh, uh, as well as post pre-order, uh, there'll be two full games installed. Uh, one is uh, Sonic uh, 4 Episode 2. Sega! So you can take a quick look at uh, at, at Sonic 4. Uh, this is the uh, you know this is the full console version of of, uh, of Sonic, uh, but it's actually optimized for Tegra 4 to run at 60 frames per second. It's actually faster uh, than uh, than the typical uh, console version runs. Um, and this full game comes pre-installed uh, on the device. So we can load up here. Yeah, this is a great example of a game. It's available on Android. So it is optimized for shield. It is. Ah. And here's my bad gameplay. Just a little bit of uh, of, of Sonic. Um, again, you know, just uh, the the controls really just come in and help you play the game much better than you would be able to on a touch device. Mm -hmm. This type of game is built for built for controls, and this is the best uh, best way to play it. The other game that comes pre-installed on the device is called uh, Expendable Rearmed, and this is a uh, a classic uh, arcade shooter, um, and is uh, just a lot of fun going around uh, running around shooting and blowing stuff up. <laughs> uh, so it's by a developer called Retrobomb. Uh, and uh, uh, again, just one of those games that plays great with the controller. So just drop in here. This is really easy to play with dual joysticks. It's a dual joystick game. And it's just sort of ma mass shooting, mass destruction. How many games are optimized for shield at launch? We have about we have about 25 that are shipping already. Mm -hmm. Tegra 3, you know, optimized about another 10 games that are coming in the June time frame. Uh, and then we've got a nice pipeline coming for the rest of the year. And then on top of that, the nice thing about the you know open platform approach is not only do you have the, the you know 35 or so uh, shield optimized games, uh, but you also have a bunch of other games out on uh, on Google Play. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just give you an example. And does that scale up? Games that aren't optimized for Shield, does it scale up to the graphics quality, speed, things like um, that? You know, they won't necessarily scale in terms of the uh, the graphics performance, but there's still a lot of fun games out there that have full controller support that mm -hmm. are good games, um, just not necessarily optimized for Tegra graphics. Gotcha. So um, uh, let's see if this one. So Virtua Tennis uh, is a good example of this. If you're a tennis fan. Uh, this is a game uh, that uh, you just jump into an exhibition match here. Um, I've played this on a tablet with touch, and it's just so difficult. <laughs> but you get with the full controller, and uh, and it just improves your performance. Uh, so I'll just jump in here, and again, this isn't this isn't a Tegra optimized game, uh, but it works great with controller, uh, and it delivers a uh, uh, an awesome experience on the device, and it's available from Google Play. Can you change the angle at all? The camera angle? Mm -hmm. No, I think this is pretty much pretty much one time camera angle. So it's pretty intuitive. As soon as you pick it up, the controller should really help you understand what does what. Yeah, I mean it's just pretty much uh, one joystick plus A. 
Mm -hmm. There's some more advanced shots and stuff like that. But you can just get so much better control uh, using the uh, using the joysticks and the gamepad uh, over the uh, over the touchscreen. Has Nvidia announced the battery life? Uh, we uh, we are quoting uh, about four to five hours for a Tegra 4 optimized game, mm -hmm. uh, and then up to ten hours of battery life for your what well, I call your typical Android game. Um, so it really depends on you know the, how processing intensive the game is, but you know you'll get a, get at least four to five hours uh, for the games that are optimized for the platform. And then the sound effect. Is there anything that developers need to do to take advantage of great sound that comes out of there? Uh, nope. It's all standard Android. <laughs> so, you know, it's just an example of. Uh, you know, of, uh, uh, of a game that's not uh, not Tiger optimized, but still works great on the platform. Uh, so, um, this is our uh, you know this is a list of launch content um, games that are uh, are either shipping a lot of them are shipping already on the market, um, or games that are going to uh, uh, be coming here in uh, uh, near near launch time from either at launch or or right near launch. Uh, and the price ranges on the games, do they vary? You know, these prices, these games... I know are, they set by NVIDIA or the developers. They're set by the, the developers.